Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Writing the Index.jsp for our MVC guessing game example. In this video, we'll review the guessing game example, MVC version, and how the index.jsp file fits in. We'll also review how to connect the request from a Java server page to a servlet. We should always do some thinking before we do some coding, so let's review the guessing game. Craig, the game master, will come up with a secret number at random between 0 and 1000. He'll ask Nick, the player of games, to make a guess. Nick will make a guess. Craig will then tell him whether it's correct or if it's wrong, whether he should guess higher or lower on the next guess. After a series of guesses, Nick will come up with the correct guess, after which Craig will tell him that he got it correct and how many guesses it took to get the correct answer. Here's how the game will flow. We'll initialize the game and set a random target, and then we'll display a view where we can get the first guess from the player. To do this, we'll use the index.jsp component that we're going to create in this video. Once the guess is put in, the user will send a request to the server side where it will hit the game servlet component. The game servlet component will compare the guess with the target and depending on the outcome of the guess, will determine whether or not the player needs to guess again, in which case it will call the guess.jsp component, or the player got the correct guess, in which case it will call correct.jsp component. Along the way, as the index, guess, and correct JSPs and the game servlet are processing the game, they'll make use of the Java class game number for each of the numbers in our particular game. Here we see the series of views that the players will see as they guess. We see the outcome of index.jsp will be a welcome message with instructions and the input form. Here's a nice way to think of any component that you're going to build in what we call an IPO table for input, process, and output. I included a couple extra columns because I wanted to show the source of any input and the destination of any output. Let's see how we might read this for our index.jsp component that we're going to build in this video. First, from the web, a request will come in. No particular data is needed for the program, except for the server will get the usual data, such as the IP address from the user, so it knows where to send back the response. Index.jsp will process this request to provide output. Output will be in the form of the view that we see here with the welcome message, the instructions, and a form but it will also need to output some data, such as the target, the random number that's generated, the guess itself, the number of guesses, and the minimum and maximum values of the range to guess. These are considered output of index.jsp. They'll initially go to the user, but then eventually they'll be the inputs for the game servlet, which is the final destination. I just have a minimal amount to process for index.jsp. I need to initialize the game values, and I'm going to create the form to get the guess. My process is kind of minimal. I could choose to be a little bit more detailed. For example, I could break initialize game values into three sub-steps, such as set minimum, set maximum, and generate a random target. So with this IPO table in mind, let's go ahead and go to Eclipse and start building index.jsp. So here we are in Eclipse. You can already see, if you look at the Project Explorer window of the Java EE perspective, that we have our Guessing Game MVC version already open. We can see the various parts, such as Java Resources, where we will put Java components. We have this broken into a Controllers package, where we'll put our servlet, and a model, where we'll put any Java classes. In this case, the game number has already been imported into this project. We also see the Web Content folder. This is where we're going to put any webby items. Since a JSP file is more naturally like an HTML file with some Java thrown in, we're going to store those in our web content folder. So let's do that now to create index.jsp. Right click on web content, select new JSP file. We'll note that it's going to be stored in the proper location and we'll change the file name to index with a lowercase i. Select Next. We'll keep the template as our 
JSP with HTML markup template, and then we'll select Finish. We saw two things happen in Eclipse. First, in the Project Explorer window under Web Content Folder, we see the index.jsp file has been created. In the center, in our Editor window, we see that index.jsp has also been created. Let's double click on the tab so that we can begin to create the index.jsp file. Already we can see that this is a mix of some special server commands and straightforward HTML. Notice the at page language. The at page language command just sets up the language that the server is going to use as it interprets and works with this file. At page commands are special server side commands that allow the server to initialize our JSP. An important initialization statement for a JSP is the page import. Just like with a regular Java class, we need to import any classes that are not immediately available to our file. So we're going to import from our model our game number class. You'll note this looks just like a Java import statement except it's wrapped in the at page command. Next we need to initialize our game values. We'll do this using Java. In a JSP, we need a special delimiter to separate the HTML from the Java, and that is the angle bracket percent delimiter. Anything between angle brackets and percent will be Java. We can place these anywhere we need them within this JSP file. However, I like to put most of my Java up at the top of the file so that we're not too mixed up down in the bottom with the HTML. Let's initialize our values. I'm going to create my minimum and my maximum as ints in this application. Minimum will be the lowest value in the range from which the player must guess. I'm going to set that equal to zero. Maximum. Maximum is the highest value in the range of possible guesses and I am going to set that equal to 1000. For my target, I'm going to use my game number class because there's a very nice method of the game number class that will allow us to get a random number in between the minimum and maximum values. So I'll declare a game number class. I'll call this one target. We'll make it a new game number. Call the default constructor. Now I'll randomize it by target dot Notice if I give it two ints, the return is void, but it will set the value of the target to a random number between minimum and maximum. My variables are already typed in, so the target now has a random value. Another number we need to initialize is the number of guesses. So I'm going to create that as a game number because we also have a nice incrementer. On the initial page, the number of guesses will be zero. We'll increment that when we get to the destination after they make the first guess. So I think we're done with step one of our process. We have initialized all the values that we need to have initialized for our game to start. Now we need to focus on the output. Much of the output is to create the view which will be displayed to the user on the client side. For that, we will mostly work with the HTML portion of the JSP. Let's start by editing the title. I'm going to copy the title and I'm going to make that an H1 tag. I'm going to have a nice greeting such as Welcome to our guessing game. I need to also include some instructions to the player about what to guess. Please guess a number between... For now, let me put in 0 and 1000. 
Suppose, though, that we want to edit our minimum and maximum to different values and that those values be placed here. Let's replace these with something that will actually just print out the value of our minimum and maximum variable at this location within the view portion of our output. A special delimiter that prints or injects values to the response is used percent equal. Very similar to a system.out.print line, but instead of printing out to a console or a printer, we're printing it out to the response object, meaning whatever Java expression we place between these delimiters will be printed out and included within the HTML and content that we have here in this section. Minimum is simply an integer, so my expression can be just to print out the value of that integer. Likewise, I'll do the same for maximum. So when this page is rendered, we should see please guess a number between minimum and maximum. Next, we need to capture the user's guess. For that, we need a form. I'll name mine just to be complete. Here's a very important part, the action. You might recall that when an HTML form is submitted, the action describes what should happen next. This could be a call to a JavaScript function. Many times, it's just a URL mapping to some other component back on the server, such as an HTML file or JSP, or perhaps a servlet. Recall that the destination for our index.jsp file is the game servlet. So we need to have an appropriate action to call up the game servlet. We'll see when we create our servlet that we'll add something called a URL mapping. We can go ahead and put an action in here with that in mind. Let's just put something simple like do guess. So the idea is when this form is submitted, the do guess action, a request will be sent to the server that says do guess. The server will then need to figure out, based on our mapping, what the do guess pertains to. And it will call up the game servlet when we create that correctly. Finally, let's add a method. I like to keep gets to start with and maybe change to post later. Okay, in our form, we need a label. Guess one. And we need a text box to capture the guess. We'll name this text box guess. The name of our input components is very important because you can think of this as the variable name for the data that's being sent. Any value that's typed into this text box, for example 500, will be sent across and labeled with guess equal 500. Also, I'm going to need a submit button, something they can click on to submit this guess. Input type equal submit name equal, let's just call it submit, and value, let's say make guess. I would like that to appear on another line, so I'm simply going to put that br break tag just after the text box. We're almost done with this, but if you look back at our IPO diagram, there are several pieces of data that need to be sent to game servlet. We have not yet discussed how to make data persist, so we're going to use an old-fashioned method which kind of passes the data back and forth from the server to the client. Namely, we're going to store any data that needs to be passed on to the next component as a hidden text box in our form. Later, we will learn much better ways to make data persist. So we need to store the target. Input, type, equal. This time, let's put hidden. Keep in mind, this is a terrible way to do this, only showing you as a stopgap until we learn how to do it better. Name equals target, and value equals. So how can I inject into this HTML tag the target value? Well, just like we entered our minimum and maximum in this line of content, we can inject values from a Java expression right in the middle of an HTML tag. We start by doing our percent equal, and then we put our expression. Recall in this example that target is a game number, so I need to call the getValue method to get that value and display it here. Another piece of data that we need to send on to the game servlet is our number of guesses.
A third piece of data to send along is our minimum value. Note that minimum was stored as a simple integer, so I just need to print that out here. Finally, I can send along the maximum as well. And I think I'm done. Let's review what we have in this page. We start with two at page commands to set up our JSP. The first one warns the server about what language and type of content will be used in this JSP. The second makes available our game number class which is stored in our model package with a page command that is very similar to a Java import. We then, between our Java delimiters, create the initial values that we're going to need to start the game, including a random target for the player to guess. After that is done, we go to our output section where we're generating the view with mostly HTML. Occasionally, though, we inject within the HTML some content that is derived from a Java expression. To do that, we do percent equal and then our Java expression. So the player will see the guessing game MVC version. Welcome to our guessing game. Please guess a number between 0 and 1,000. And then the form. In the form, we provide some components for the player to enter a guess and click on a button. In addition, we have included some hidden values so that we can pass data on to the game servlet. Finally, the action of the form is very important. This tells the browser what should be caused to happen when the form is submitted. In this case, we're going to use do guess. We'll see when we create our game servlet that we'll map the word do guess to running the game servlet. This will be called a URL mapping. At this point, we are ready to test our index.jsp. Right click on the project, select run as, run on server, double check that it's coming up on Tomcat, and hit finish. This will spin up our Tomcat server. And on my machine, it will pull up the Firefox browser and we see Guessing Game MVC version is being shown as a view. Notice it says, Welcome to our Guessing Game. Please guess a number between 0 and 1,000 and provides us with a way to guess the first guess. If we view the source, we can see what the browser actually saw before it rendered the view. None of the Java is included in the first lines. For Java in a JSP, the server is like Las Vegas. What happens on the server stays on the server. But HTML and any output that is injected within the HTML is sent to the client for rendering as the view. Note where the zero is. Recall that we injected the minimum value. Note where a thousand is. We injected the maximum. And we can see some hidden numbers down here in the form. This is helpful because target is stored as 398. And while we're testing, it's nice to know what the target is going to be. Let's test a little bit further. Let's type in 500. When we click on guess, we should generate a get request to the do guess mapping. We'll get a 404 error because we haven't created that component yet. We should be able to see in the URL that it's going to the correct mapping and any data that's concatenated. As expected, here's a 404 error. We can see in the URL that it's trying to call do guess, and we can see the various data from our text box and our hidden text boxes being sent to the servlet. So it looks like with this component, we're good to go. For more information about the concepts that you learned in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.